Doctor Who went from being an extremely iconic show to an extremely iconic show, obviously the first season and the most recent season being iconic for extremely different reasons. One being the perfect example of how to create a modern day entertainment show and the other, well, it really isn't. Beginning with William Hartnell, 14 actors have headlined the series as The Doctor and as of 2024, Nchuti Gawa leads the series as the 15th Doctor. Each actor's portrayal is distinct, but all represent stages in the life of the same character and, together, they form a single lifetime with a single narrative. The transition from one actor to the next is written into the plot of the series with the concept of regeneration into a new incarnation, a plot device in which, when a Time Lord is fatally injured, their cells regenerate and they are then reincarnated. There have been many debates on who the best Doctor is, but there is pretty much no debate on who the worst Doctor is. But, with the introduction of Gatwa, maybe that will change. For the sake of this video, I will be heavily focused on the current era of Doctor Who, also known as New Who. The reason for this is that the pre-New Who era is pretty much flawless, and so us discussing it would be similar to giving a drug addict some cowpole to ease their come down. It's fucking pointless, is what I'm trying to say. We progressed from the stoic 9th to the charismatic 10th to the sweet 11th to the grumpy but endearing 12th to the I'm a woman and that's all I have to my personality 13th back to the slightly aged but still charismatic 14th. Well, we can now add to that growing list with the I'm black and gay and that's all I have to my personality 15th. After the catastrophic failure of Whitaker's run, they desperately needed to course correct and save this decaying franchise, so they decided to bring back Russell T Davies, which the fandom all agreed was a fantastic decision. But unfortunately, in interviews with Gatwa, it has been made abundantly clear that this is not the same Russell T Davies that reintroduced the series to the new era of fans. Russell T Davies was hailed as the icon that brought back the show from the abyss when it was finished back in 1989, but a 16-year hiatus did not stop the first episode of New Who being a resounding success. Christopher Eccleston, being the first Doctor in the new era, candidly stated in an interview back in 2019 that he left the show due to onset politics after just one season, politics that were being pushed by Russell T Davies. Davies then left the show shortly after David Tennant's run to be replaced by a writer on his staff, Stephen Moffat, the same man that wrote Sherlock, which begs the question, was Davies the genius behind these iconic stories? Or was it Moffat? Because if it was Davies, surely after his departure the show would have taken a sharp decline. But with the 11th Doctor, Matt Smith, the show continued to succeed. The show stayed fairly consistent for a fairly long time, but when it really went downhill was when Moffat left and Chris Chibnall was introduced in 2018, and coincidentally enough, Jodie Whittaker was introduced as the first female Doctor. And I think we can all agree that a female Doctor was not a wise choice, and that the Doctor, although the term is ambiguous, should always be a male. The show has been such a success due to the writing talents of the team that worked on the show from 2005 to 2016, with Doctors 9 through 12 putting in stellar performances, and the companions doing the exact same. Each of these individuals having an overlying character archetype that has many, many nuances under the surface that are revealed as we get to know them throughout the series. And funnily enough, Chibnall's writing staff don't seem to have this ability to create a good show with interesting narratives. Instead, they write an obnoxious bitch that is not only dismissive of her companions and their problems, but outright rude and mistakes charisma for being a massive cunt. Whereas Eccleston was a nihilistic angry bastard, that made sense. He had just resurged after one of the greatest and bloodiest wars there has been. There is a reason the Ninth Doctor is known as the War Doctor. I fail to see what Whitaker's excuse is, and some people may think I'm being harsh. After all, she didn't write her character, but she does perform her. Delivery and tone is everything when it comes to how people respond to you. It's never what you say, but how you say it. 
I think you could improve with this is far more affable than saying, Oi, you, yeah, you're shit. Sounds better, doesn't it? So if the writing is shit, the acting is shit, and the doctor is shit, what about the companions? Well, the inverse dynamic does make it interesting for about five minutes, which is about how long it takes you to realise that none of these companions have any personality. Graham seems rather sweet and optimistic, which is basically just Rose Tyler with a penis. So even the positive parts of the newer seasons are just reskins of the first few seasons. And then there's Yaz, who might be the most unlikable companion in the history of the show. I could put a compilation of her being extremely obnoxious and abusing her authority as a junior police officer, but if I were to do that, this video would take about a decade to edit. So with Chris and Jodie finally leaving, insert applause here, we unfortunately come to the current state of affairs with Davies and Gatwa. And even more unfortunately, it seems they are both breaking records, those records being the lowest viewed episodes in Doctor Who history. Not just New Who, the, the entirety of Doctor Who, which spans back to 1963. But what do you expect when in every single press junket and interview all these people talk about is being gay and how diversity matters? This being a show where for the last 60 years the vast majority of the characters have been aliens. You, you can't really get much more diverse than that. But now that the show is owned by Disney, I imagine it's going to get far, far worse. Episodes 1 and episodes 2 of Gatwa's first season of Being the Doctor were shown back to back, episode 1 having 2.6 million viewers and episode 2 having 2.4 million viewers. This means that nearly a quarter of a million viewers couldn't even be bothered to leave the show on to watch the next episode. They had to make more effort to change the channel than to just watch it. Yet they did anyway, that's how shit it was. But let's focus on the Doctor, Nchuti Gawa. I have no problem with a black actor playing the Doctor. I have no problem with a black gay actor playing the Doctor. But what I do have a problem with is when the Doctor's personality is that they are black and gay. Can somebody please give me an example of any of the Doctors from 1 to 12 where their personality was, I'm white and I'm straight. Yeah, I can't think of any either. So I think we can safely say that as of 2018, after the departure of Stephen Moffat and Peter Capaldi, Doctor Who officially died, which is a real shame. But at least we have 500 or so episodes of good Doctor Who to watch. And I have always believed in letting a good thing die when it needs to. If only Game of Thrones and Black Mirror had taken that same advice. Anyway, I thank you all for watching. I hope you are all doing well. And as always... Take care.